Lucy Membri del governo del corpo diplomatico, distinte autorità religiose, insigni rappresentanti della società civile e del mondo della cultura. Signore e signori, grazie signor Presidente per le sue parole. Sono lieto di essere in questa terra che porto nel cuore. La ringrazio signor Presidente per l'accoglienza che mi ha rivolto. Saluto cordialmente ciascuno di voi e attraverso di voi tutte le donne e gli uomini che popolano questo giovane e caro paese. Vengo come pellegrino, come pellegrino di riconciliazione, con il sogno di accompagnarvi nel vostro cammino di pace, un cammino tortuoso, ma non più rimandabile. Non sono giunto qui da solo, perché nella pace come nella vita si cammina insieme. E come dunque a voi, con due fratelli, l'arcivescovo di Canterbury e il moderatore dell'Assemblea Generale della Chiesa di Scozia, che ringrazio per quanto ci hanno appena detto, o ci diranno. Insieme, tendendovi la mano, ci presentiamo a voi e a questo popolo nel nome di Gesù Cristo, Principe della Pace. Abbiamo infatti intrapeso questo pellegrinaggio ecumenico di pace dopo aver ascoltato il grido di un intero popolo che, con grande dignità, piange per la violenza che soffre, per la perenne mancanza di sicurezza, per la povertà che lo colpisce e per i disastri naturali che inferiscono. Anni di guerre e di conflitti non sembrano conoscere fine, eppure recentemente Persino ieri si sono verificati aspri scontri, mentre i processi di riconciliazione sembrano paralizzati e le promesse di pace restano incompiute. Questa estenuante sofferenza non sia vana. La pazienza e i sacrifici del popolo sul sudanese, di questa gente giovane, questa gente umile e coraggiosa, interpellino tutti e come semi che nella terra danno vita alla pianta vedano sbocciare germogli di pace che portino frutto fratelli e sorelle è l'ora della pace frutti e vegetazione qui abbondano grazie al grande fiume che attraversa il paese quanto un antico storico erodotto diceva dell'Egitto ossia che è un dono del Nilo vale anche per il Sud Sudan. Davvero, come qui si dice, questa è una terra della grande abbondanza. Vorrei dunque lasciarmi trasportare dall'immagine del grande fiume che attraversa questo paese recente ma dalla storia antica. Nei secoli gli esploratori si sono inoltrati nel territorio in cui ci troviamo per risalire il Nilo Bianco alla ricerca delle sorgenti del fiume più lungo del mondo. Proprio dalla ricerca delle sorgenti del vivere comune vorrei incominciare il mio percorso con voi, perché questa terra che abbonda di tanti beni nel sottosuolo, ma soprattutto nei cuori e nelle menti dei suoi abitanti, oggi ha bisogno di essere nuovamente dissettata da sorgenti fresche e vitali. Distinte autorità, siete voi queste sorgenti, le sorgenti che irrigano la convivenza comune, i padri e le madri di questo paese fanciullo. Voi siete chiamati a rigenerare la vita sociale come fonti limpide di prosperità e di pace, perché di questo hanno bisogno i figli del Sud Sud. Hanno bisogno di padri, non di padroni di passi stabili di sviluppo, non di continue cadute. Gli anni successivi alla nascita del Paese, segnati da un'infanza ferita, lasciano un posto a una crescita pacifica. E l'ora, i vostri autorità, i vostri figli, e la storia stessa, vi ricorderanno 
se avrebbe, avrebbe fatto io, del bene a questa popolazione for the benefit of these people that you have been called to le generazioni future generations will either venerate your names or cancel their memory based on what you now do for just as the nine leaves it sources to begin its course so the course of history will leave behind the enemies of peace and bring renown to those Infatti, who are true peacemakers. Indeed, as the scripture tells us, there is a prosperity for the man of peace. Violence, on the other hand, turns back to the course of history. Herodotus himself spoke of the international disruption brought on by war when children no longer bury their parents but parents bury their children in order that this land may not turn into a cemetery but become once more a luxurious garden i beg you with all my heart to accept for simple words not my words but those of christ he himself spoke them in a garden in Jessamine, went to a disciple of his who had drawn a sword, he cried, no more of this. Dear President and Vice Presidents, in the name of God, of the God to whom we prayed together in Rome, of the God who is gentle and humble in heart, the God in whom so many people of this beloved country believe now, it's time to say no more of this without ifs or buts, no more bloodshed, no more conflicts, no more violence, mutual recrimination about who is responsible for it, no more leaving your people a test for peace. No more destruction. It is time to build. Lift the time of war behind and let a time of peace dawn. On this, my dear President, this is what we have uh, had in Uganda. There is need for the peace. Let us go ahead on that. Let us go. Let us go on the discussions of, of the, the night living source and passing through Republica. Republic. What is the meaning of becoming one republic? It, yet what does it mean? It means seeing yourself as truly public of the people. It is a declare that the state belongs to everyone and consequently those entrusted with greater responsibility. This is for the service of the common good. That is the purpose of power. There is temptation that we always want to serve for one's own. It is necessary when starting with the primary goods, the abundant resources with which God has blessed this land should not be restricted to a few but recognized legacy and plans for economic recovery should coincide with proposals for an equitable distribution of wealth the growth of sound essential to life of the republic it preserves the health distinction of powers such as way that, for example, those who administer justice can do so without interference from those who Democracy presupposes respect for human rights upheld by law and application of law, particularly the right to the freedom. It should be in mind that there is no peace without justice. Without freedom, there is no justice. 
but also that there is no justice. Every citizen, therefore, should be enabled to make the most of the unique and unbreatable gift of his or her life and be provided with suitable means of doing. In the words of Pope John Paul the 23, every human being the right to life, immediately, integrity, denying living his sources and passing through some uneven terrain in creeks, waterfalls, and rapids, enters the South Sudanese plain and near Juba becomes navigable. Before entering more bogey areas in a similar way, I trust that the Republic's path to peace will not proceed unevenly, but starting from this capital, will take a course that can be navigated and not to be pushed down by in Asia. Dear friends, it is time to move from words to deeds. It is time to turn to the, the page. It is time for commitment to an urgent and much needed transformation. The process of peace and reconciliation requires a new start. May an understanding be rich and progress be made in moving forward with the peace accord and roadmap. In a world scared by divisions and conflict, this country is hosting an ecumenical pilgrimage of peace, which is something rare. It, it represents a change of direction, an opportunity for South Sudan to resume whaling in calm waters, taking up dialogue. Without duplicity and opportunism, may it be on everyone an occasion to revive home. Let its citizens understand that the time has come to stop being carried along by the tainted waters of hatred, tribalism, regionalism, ethnic difference. It is time to sail it is time to sail together towards the future. Together, together. Let us not forget this word together. The course of the Great River can also suggest a way to move forward along its way, the Nile joins. The Nile joins another river at Lake No, forming the so-called White Nile. It is transparently clear waters, then arise from an encounter. This is the part to take, to respect one another, to get to know one another, and to engage in dialogue. Behind every form of violence, there is anger and resentment. And behind every form of anger and resentment, there is an unhealthy memory of wounds, humiliation, and wrongs. It follows that the only way to bring free, and this is through encounter, by accepting others as our brothers and sisters and making room for them even. This attitude, which is essential for any peace process, is also indispensable for the cohesive development of society. In the passage from the barbarity of confrontation to a culture of vital encounter, young people have a decisive role to play. Consequently, they should be provided with the open space. May they fearlessly take hold of future, which is uh, then to women. May women, mothers who know how life is generated and safeguarded, need to be increasingly involved in political life of decision-making process. Women need to be respected for anyone who commits an act of violence towards a woman commits it towards God who took flesh from women. Neighbor is a brother, sister, the great Rebion. The young history of this country, torn by ethnic 
clashes needs a discover of mystic of encounter the grace of whole there is a need to look beyond grounds and differences in order to journey as one people which as in the Nile is enriched by the contribution of its various tributaries to us precisely by, by the river and essentially ago the first missionaries to the shores of follow over died by many humanitarian workers I want to thank all of them let us not forget let us not forget to guarantee them I want to thank let us not forget the security and support they need for their charitable works. A great river, however, can at times overflow and cause disasters. Tragically, this has been the experience of many victims of floods in this country. I express the closeness to them. Natural disasters tell a tale of nature that is battered and wounded and from being a source of life. We need the foresight to care for creation for the sake of future generations. I think in particular of the need to combat the deforestation, deforestation caused by profiteering. To prevent a river from flooding, it is bed has to be kept clean, leaving behind the metaphor, the cleaning needed by the flow of life in society is represented by the battle against corruption. The inequitable distribution of funds, secret schemes to get rich, patronage deals, lack of transparency, all this pollute the river bed of human which the pressing need of any civilized country is to care for its citizen especially the most vulnerable in this way. weapons that despite bans continue to arrive in many countries in the area including South Sudan many things here we need many things many things are needed here but surely not more here I will mention the development of suitable health care policies and need for vital infrastructures and especially the primary goal of promoting literacy and education and only the like events in it. like all the children like all the children of this land will be able to take their future have the right to grow up holding in their hands not books and toys not weapons and tools for labor finally finally the white nile nile, nile leaves south sudan passes through other countries joins the blue nile and then flows into the side rivers no no borders they connect different territories in a similar way in order to achieve a suitable development it is essential now more than ever the 
to foster positive relationship with other countries, starting with those in the area. Here, I think two of the precious contribution made by the international community to this country. And I express my gratitude for the efforts made to promote reconciliation and development. I am convinced that for those contribution to be fruitful, genuine understanding of social process and problems is essential. It is not enough to analyze and report on them from afar. This is a need to be directly involved with the patients and determinations and more generally. As St. John Paul II said 30 years ago, in African solution must be found to African problems. Mr. President, distinguished authorities, in tracing the course of the Nile, I wanted to venture along the path of this country as young as it is beloved. I realized that some of what I have had to say may appear bland and direct, but please know that this arises only from the affection. I follow, I follow, I follow the life of the country. Together with my brothers, with whom I have come here as a pilgrim of peace, we wish to offer you our heartfelt prayers and our support so that South Sudan can experience reconciliation and change of direction. May its vital cause no longer be overwhelmed by the blood of violence merged in the swamps of corruption and blocked by the Indian of poverty. May the Lord of Heaven, who loves this land, grant it a new season of peace and prosperity. God bless the Republic of South Sudan.